Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog, and thank you all so much for supporting my show. As always, we are at 1,500 subscribers, and that may change. Like sometimes I lose a subscriber here or there, uh, so it may drop under 1,500. But at least for now, we cross that threshold, and I want to say thank you because that's almost a thousand more people than when we started this show. When I started this show uh, back in November of last year. Uh, we only had about 600 subscribers on this channel. And so just to know like in the seven and a half months that have passed that we got a thousand people on here is really, really awesome. It means a lot to me, especially considering you know, that that's a fast growth for me, I think. And especially considering I'm a channel where I'm mostly positive and I'm kind of upbeat and optimistic. I know a lot of little people, not a lot of people like that. Uh, to, so to see that and see you guys come together and help this show grow so much, it really means a lot to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I will try to hopefully plan something fun to do when we hit 2,000, if we hit 2,000. Uh, I'm not going to you know, be that optimistic, but let's say we keep growing. If we get near 2,000, I'll try to plan a fun video for you guys. Uh, and if you have some suggestions, something you want to see, let me know. Maybe I'll take a trip to San Francisco or something uh, and go to locations where they film the movie or something like that. I'll, you know, I'll invest some money into that, uh, assuming I can save up any, but I'll work, I'll work on it. Uh, but thank you guys for, for that endless support. I really do appreciate it. And also the views that we've been getting on the trailer reaction and also that are coming in current Currently on the uh, trailer breakdown. I see a lot of comments on there, a lot of people watching it. Thank you for watching that whole hour. I really appreciate it. I know an hour is like a Lord of the Rings length movie in YouTube time. So the fact that you're you're sticking in there and you're watching it and you're seeing my theories and, and you know my breakdown, it really does mean a lot. And I'm, I'm happy to hear yours. So make sure you leave your comments there. And then also our, our video for responses. Normally I would do that next, but since since I just like stayed up all night last night till like 3 a.m. working on that video and it's an hour long, I I figure we'll try to break it up and I won't do two one hour videos back to back. So I'll give you the response video in a couple days where I'll go through the trailer reaction and I'll read some of your comments and respond to them. So make sure you go over there and leave some more comments. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about is just a few little things. Uh, first off, you know, Venom poster from Japan. I saw a lot of you guys sharing this and tweeting it out and posting it. So uh, I wanted to share that for those of you who haven't seen it maybe. This is really awesome. I also saw Todd McFarlane who created Spawn and co-created Venom. He actually Instagrammed this out too and said, you know what, as the co-creator of Venom, this is pretty rad. <laughs> so that was cool to see him, you know, get behind it and, you know, get into the visual of it, especially considering he didn't really draw Venom with a long tongue and he doesn't really like the long tongue. But this, obviously this image has Venom with a long tongue and he was still like, you know what, it's cool. It, it works for me. So a uh, big shout out to Todd McFarlane there and to all of you guys who are sharing that because that is a really cool poster and thank you for sharing it because that's how I was able to see it as well was on Twitter. So thank you guys. Um, and then also the fact that we hit 1500, you know, that's a big deal to me. I wanted to thank you guys personally in this video uh, but then also we do cover some venom news that gets out there any articles that go out there and there's actually an article out there right now that i myself wrote uh, and i got to give a big thank you and shout out to the marvel report who was nice enough to reach out to me a friend of mine over there named andy babak who works there and he also does stuff for the hashtag show and a couple other news sources online he does a lot of great dc podcast stuff um so i'll put a link down below to his uh, all of his stuff make sure you check him out. He's a really awesome dude. He's been a friend of mine for years, and uh, and he was nice enough to ask me a couple months ago, right after that last trailer came out, uh, he was like, hey, do you think they're going to do another trailer around Comic-Con? I said, yes, it's either going to be at Comic-Con or soon after. And he said, uh, well, you know, would you like to write an article for us, like the top, t you know, top seven Venom books that everyone should read or something? And I said, uh, you know what, let's, let me think on that and let me see, because I've already kind of made a video where I talked about seven graphic novels of Eddie Brock's that everyone should read. Read uh, early on, and uh, and I was like, so let me see if I can tweak it and come up with a new angle on it, and I'll get back to you. And so like around the week before Comic Con, when we were all getting excited for the trailer possibly coming, I was like, all right, I'll email Andy and I'll send him this idea that I have, where it's it's an almost like an unbiased article in a way, where it's like, all right, here's five must read Eddie Brock stories. But not just must read Eddie Brock stories in general, but must read Eddie Brock stories to make you have an opinion on whether he's a good person or a bad person. And I know a lot of people were really shocked that I didn't include Dark Origin in this top five list. It was definitely going to be something I was going to do an honorable mention of. And uh, and really when I was like trying to keep it to five, because I was like, oh, maybe I'll just go six and I'll include Dark Origin. But I was like, no, let's do five. Let's keep it simple. The article was already long enough. And I thought, you know, Dark Origin's great. It does a lot of great things in it, I think. Um, but I feel like the death of uh, Gene DeWolf, I thought that was a much more important story to put in there as far as framing 
uh, the the idea of you know is Eddie Brock a good person or not according to you uh, because me and Swordsman I really like our conversations he has a different opinion about Eddie Brock as a person than I do I like Eddie Brock being a morally broken person sure he will probably make the right decision but not always and I like that about him because I think that's very human um, I think that is what makes him relatable is that he's just like all of us he will make mistakes he'll make the wrong decision but he will do it 50 50 percent of the time not like 60 40 or 70 30. And so uh, so I like those conversations I have with swordsmen, and that's what kind of inspired the article was, hey, why don't I write and explain the scenes that happen in these books and let people decide if they like Eddie Brock. And so Gene DeWolf's death was important to that because you have to understand what New York City lost in the Sin Eater story uh, to understand where Eddie's, you know, screw up you know, why that's so important. And so uh, it's best to know who the you know, victim was. Uh, so that way when Eddie, you know, kind of cuts corners to tell his story and, and try to get famous, it makes him look even worse because now you have a connection to Gene DeWolf. And I think Peter David did such a great job on that storyline. So I wanted to, you know, shine a light on that. So I know Dark Origin didn't make the cut, but that's the reason why. It was going to be in there, but I really thought the death of Gene DeWolf mattered more. So if you want to read this article, I'll put a link to it down below at the Marvel Report. Big thank you to those guys over there and Andy for reaching out to me and asking me to do something like this because it meant a lot to me. I used to write articles all the time and I used to, you know, be more of a writer and I've kind of fallen away from that. I, I kind of have a lot of self-doubt now. I'm working on a project now that's taken almost two year, over two years to uh, finish and we're still not even fully finished yet. And it's definitely hit my confidence in a big way um, and I've learned a lot from from you know story structure and things that I thought I knew before and I'm really growing as a writer so I think by the time Neverland comes out you guys will you'll see that I'm leaps and bounds above where I used to be as a writer but it was nice to get something small out there and something intimate and something Venom related out there for you guys so if you can please spend a minute or two to go check out that article I'll put a link down below make sure you follow Marvel Report and all the other links I put down there for Andy make sure you check all that stuff out as well and so that's gonna be it for this episode this is just mostly a thank you the Japanese poster in the article um, so I will get back to more Venom movie news and comic book stuff uh, in the next episode. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.